Hello, welcome back to Lorenzo's Mission 14 in the Mission A Day series, Part 2. For those of you that just tuned in, this probe in view here is part of a Vol and Suborbital Manned Trajectory Mission combined. Mission titles are not this agency's strong suit. Anyway, the plan was to launch this probe into a Vol exploration trajectory while simultaneously putting a capsule on a suborbital trajectory which is incidentally what the mission controller plugin here would pay for. This failed. The rocket made a cartwheel in the upper atmosphere and failed to achieve enough delta V to put the man in a suborbital trajectory. He reached 50-60 kilometers, just didn't make it. Got back to the planet safely, but didn't reach space, so didn't get paid. So we are in money problems. We have four and a half thousand credits, not enough to do anything, but we still have a functioning space probe. Uh, when I say functioning, I mean somewhat functioning, because we're in an orbit with a periapsis of just 53 kilometers and an apoapsis of 190. So first things first, let's fire these engines to get that orbit actually stable, and then we can look at getting to Joule. So adding a little bit of speed to this momentum, to this orbit, and here we are, well in space, very stable, very well. Now, cartwheeling through the atmosphere like we did obviously wasted a lot of Delta V, so getting to Joule is very much a question of luck, of hope, of possibilities. I don't really know what to hope for at this point, except that I'm almost at the right point for an ejection burn. We're going to plot the maneuver note real quick and see if we are in fact at the right point. If I burn this, I think this is pretty much bang on where we started the mission. Um, well, maybe not quite yet. We need more Delta V from this burn. We only have a small engine, so the burn might take a while. So let's have a look, increase this a little bit more, and then move the node around so we eject in line with Kerbin's orbit around the sun. So I think that's about spot on. See, there we go, over and away from Jules. So I'm going to decrease the velocity a little bit, and here we have a beautiful encounter. 304 days into the future. So this probe is facing a long journey. 306 days into the future, we can make that. So here we have the encounter set up. The maneuver note is for two kilometers per second of Delta V. Now I know from reading the engineer view that this upper stage, this probe stage has about a kilometer per second of Delta V. So if we have one kilometer per second of Delta V in this tank remaining, we should at least be good to go for a dual encounter. So I'm going to light up the engine. The burn is in, well, the node is in two minutes and 20 seconds and our burn is going to take three minutes. So actually I should wait for about a minute more. So let's time warp that up a little bit. So that should do about six seconds. Here we go. I'm going to do this burn, it will take a while. So this will be cut out for you. See you at the end of this burn. Right, so we managed to do the burn even on this second stage or I don't know how many states it was, but the interplanetary injection stage. It worked fine, we have some fuel remaining for orbit trajectory corrections and whatnot, so that's really good. We are on the night side of Kerbin, I transmitted one set of Gravioli datas, and this means we are almost out of power. Um, it's hard to see the rocket in this view, and that also counts for the solar panels. They have trouble seeing the sun, and generating electricity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the solar panels so that this probe will get energy as soon as it gets into the sun again and then I'm going to hit the time acceleration and wait for the sunrise basically. Extend the panels, there we go. And this should be f well enough to catch some sun. So I'm going to time accelerate forward and hope we don't run out of electricity because that's always a bother. Here we go. We are, and there we go, back in the sun. And the panels are doing a marvelous job of generating power for us. Now, to get a quick look over of the spacecraft in its current shape and form, let's see, we can rotate it a little bit. We have this, the solar panels here, they are our power source. We have the, our antenna and sensors here, some batteries fuel tanks for the small engine and the leftover interplanetary stage. We also have a heat shield 
is is unused as of yet and we are going to use that to try an arrow break in Jules upper atmosphere now the last probe that attempted that didn't fare so well it crashed and got crushed so we're going to go with a very conservative altitude of about 105 110 kilometers periapsis but before all that is going to happen now let's take a screenshot of this probe to use as the thumbnail for the movie no, it's not pretty enough. Anyway, I'm going to time warp up until the ascending node point here, where we will do a course correction, or at least attempt one, and intercept Jewel. See you in a bit. So here we are finally in a jewel, well not an orbit yet, but a jewel sphere of influence. It's too far out to see, but we can see the sun is very dim indeed. So first things first, we are going to do our science experiments. And... Well, let's rotate the craft so we can at least see it. It's a year old craft almost by now, 299 days. The people on Kerbin have been waiting anxiously for this data. And fortunately it can be picked up. Gravity scan high over Joule. 420 science points. This gravioli detector, it was a bit of a pain to unlock it in the first place. But boy is it raking in the science. Like a boss. So I'm going to try and establish a trajectory to get into orbit over Joule. Or over Joule, well, at Joule while while jeweling anyway and after setting up that note i'm going to leave for work in something what is hopefully not a recurring theme but my alarm just went and it is about time to well to do productive useful stuff that makes me money so f unfortunately ksp takes a backseat to that most of the time so 10 million kilometers we are going for a blisteringly low periapsis of a hundred kilometers. This is probably very irresponsible and everything. There is my alarm to go for work. Let's have a look here. A thousand kilometers and we want of course to... Ooh, we want to be in the plane with the moons. So let's do that while we're far out. In plane with, with Vol at any rate. Let's... Let's find Vol and make sure we are going in the right plane with that. So jewel can I please look at that oh I can do this Jesus I should have known this a hundred million years ago focus jewel here we go fall this is equatorial with jewel so great so here comes the maneuver node going to set that up so I encounter vol hopefully <laughs> at any rate let's Put that in plane with Vol, and I think that should pretty much do it. And then, of course, I also need to reduce the periapsis to get a little bit of arrow breaking done. And I stress a little bit because I don't want to re a repeat of last mission. Of uh, I don't remember the mission number, but it was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible. Um, dual periapsis. 35 million somethings. 35 million somethings. Wow, doing this we even get a Vol encounter. Isn't that something? We get a flyby with Vol and if we do this, we can play it safe, expend 87 meters per second to get a Vol flyby. We will probably not have enough. Oh, we can just see how much delta v that would be to break into a Julian orbit. Can we see that now? How much delta v that would take? I don't think we can. Oh, yes, we can. 1100 meters per second. So that would probably be the same for a direct. Vol capture, how much would that be? 
It would mean we can ditch the heat shield, which would save on all maneuvers. Wait, what is this doing? We want to go for a direct vol capture. Why is it not letting me... Ooh, we have a very small window to do this. Add a maneuver. Go on. This would be a maneuver around the vol. Some, I'm not getting something about this system. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're not going to try a suicidal arrow break. We're lined up too perfectly for this vol encounter. We are going to attempt a propulsive capture over vol. And this all will start with an 87 meter per second burn in 7 hours. I'm going to do that and then I will leave for work because I will be late otherwise. Important things await. Hopefully this afternoon I will be able to finish it. Let's have a look. Working on Sunday, it should be forbidden. Exploring Val for the first time is obviously a lot more important. So here we go, doing our 85 meter per second burn. Bam, there we go, and we should have set up an encounter with Val now. No, it just didn't make it. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. So what do we need to do? Do we need to increase it? Yes, we need to boost a little bit more. I can do that without maneuver nodes. We are just going to boost prograde a little bit. If I can figure out where prograde is. It is probably... somewhere near here. You can see here at work the beauties of rocket science. Tumbling a ship around in search for a prograde marker. Oh, there we are. I was in a target mode, which doesn't have a prograde marker. Gee, I'm so good at rocket science. It is amazing. Really, it is. And I am noticing I have, very, I have quite a bit of trouble controlling the rockets. This is because the only control authority at this point is the probes uh, the probes reaction wheel which is positively tiny first things first I'm going to decouple the heat shield we are now committed to the decision of doing a propulsive capture as we cannot protect ourselves against Jules atmosphere anymore but we are a good bit lighter which should make everything very much easier I'm going to do a slight burn first to get clear of the heat shield and to set up this encounter. Oh, here we go. We have now a Vol Periapsis. See if we can reduce this further by burning more and we can. So if nothing else we're going to get a 400 kilometer flyby of Vol which is already pretty amazing if you ask me. And now I'm going to get ready for work. So please click on to part number three which will be uploaded right after this to see how we explore Vol. Thanks for watching. Like subscribe, comment, share, all those good things, and I'll be seeing you guys in part three. Bye-bye.